Yo, 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 what is up? Good morning. What's up, Eric? What's up, Lilit? What's up, Mel, Justin, Alexis, King Carnage, Ryan, Daffy? Let's kick ass today. <laughs> you missed my beautiful voice. I appreciate that. We're going to have all kind of funs today. We'll go over the you know, normal charts, the equities, the weights, and then we'll uh, do some bigger time frame charting, and then, yeah. <clears throat> Yo, what is up, Gold Creation? I feel like I haven't seen your name in a minute, or maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe I'm just seeing too many names now, but good to see you again. How Spy Show on 493.59 on mine? Because it is 493.59, dear lord. <laughs> uh, Mel, I don't have extended hours on. It is at that price. <laughs> I don't. I don't have extended hours on. Come on, man. Good morning and happy turnaround Tuesday. Good morning, Sand Dollar. Yo, yo, yo. What's that, Maddie Clams? Everybody's saying yo, yo, yo. I like it. Good morning, D Touch. I don't even know why I say that in the beginning of my videos. I'm gonna be super honest with you guys i have no plans when i make my videos but I, don't, I have no idea why i have conned the whole yo 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 intro bullshit <laughs> i genuinely have no idea i was just about to say please no one be that person that says there's fed speakers today it's like no shit there's a lot there's a lot this week <laughs> but thank you, creator, for adding on to that. It's a rocky thing, 100%. It's a trademark now, yeah. Except now, like, and I've done this before, like, talking to friends and just people around the chat, but sometimes I'll, like, join into a call with them, though, and I'll be like, yo, 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 you know, just to say hi. And I'll sometimes say it, and they're like, yo, what are you doing, like, a YouTube video? <laughs> it's kind of funny. I wish I would have conned something cooler than that. Beat you to it. Appreciate you. We were fed up with fed stonksters. Yeah, but it's normal by now. Like, honestly, like, anybody complaining about that shit now is honestly either just... Just now started paying attention to it, and they've been around, or they haven't been around. And they're, you know, seeing the impact they have. Because, I mean, it's funny, though, because, like... The reason non-voting uh, Fed speakers have so much power is because, like, people don't know that. People don't know the difference between a, a voter and a non-voter. Like, there's tons of people there, you know, that can talk about inflation and all that stuff, but not all of them are going to be voting on the actual policies regarding these conversations, you know? It's just, I don't know. So, honestly, all of them are important. All of them have an impact. All of them can say something special, give us something new at any time. And that's the reason I think why they've become so annoying to most people is because of how much, if you are going to trade off of them, you, how much you have to pay attention, you know? And that's why I think I've given up on the whole trying to understand it all, trying to navigate it. Because even when you do understand it and everything is correct, that doesn't mean the price action is going to move exactly how you think it is, you know? Um, a lot of the time, price is leading up, you know, rallying as we lead towards these pieces of news. You know, and then as they come out, that's when you start to see your slowdowns, your pullbacks. Maybe you see initial impulse moves to the upside, but at very close afterwards, they're all pulling back, you know. And it's almost like you don't need to know what the auction news is. You just need to actually play something that's, you know, stable, whether it's the BB system or you're trading, you know, whatever system you're on. That doesn't matter. Stick to it, you know, stick to a consistent method. That's always going to be a little bit more fun to follow and actually, you know, give you feasible trades. Uh, without you know making you freak out and have to pay attention to news all the time because I'm not gonna sit here and break down every Fed speaker every single time they speak. That's just not gonna happen. I'm not a I'm not an economist. I'm good. Spy wants to rip it open. How it's looking? Yeah, it does look like it wants to rip it open. The fact that I don't I know I don't have extended hours on, but Mel's right at 493.60s. We're right under this area, which means we're holding previous day close in pre market and we're trying to hit our head against this. So they're trying to push through this, make it to previous day high supply. So that's going to probably be your first initial move today is a move beyond this into this area. 
it's building pressure beyond this area that will be impressive because that'll one make a new all-time high but two make new fresh highs over previous day high supply or i'm sorry two day ago supply we're just leaving it there we didn't we didn't add anything except this level yesterday uh so yeah there's no difference on your charts between this level uh what's up randy z welcome to the gang welcome to the lowell supporter gang appreciate you probably should have a better name for that too but i appreciate you good morning fake mojo aloha sf Yeah, they're, Daffy, they're supposed to, but they don't because people don't understand the difference. Most people who are trading don't know that, oh, this guy that's speaking is a non-voting member. Check. Not listening to what he's saying. Like, they can still say something impactful. It's crazy. Uh, good morning, E. Detouch said, be sure to leave a like on the stream. Good morning to you as well, Detouch. Always happy to see your name pop up. I said good morning to Daffy, right? Okay, yeah, I did. He was one of the first people. Good morning, King Clips. Always good to see you. What's up, Randy Z? Good morning. Good morning, Green Candlestick. How you doing, Adam? Oh, y'all didn't know Green Candlestick is Adam Bomb? What's up, Scott? Good morning, Timmy. Good morning, Garden. Doxed. <laughs> Good morning, season. Good to see you. Is this, uh, oh yeah, this is the same season. Okay. I know half of you are only here for marbles. Y'all don't care about, y'all don't even care about stocks. <laughs> All right, so minute and 10 seconds before the market opens. Game plans for spying queues are on the left. If you're in my Discord and you have premium, there is a couple other tickers I'm going to start posting every single day. I posted three of them today, so go check that. Uh, the Daily Updates channel, maybe we can check that as a whole together right now. <clears throat> so Daily Updates channel, I post in here every single morning when I'm here. Uh, news, corporate news, and earnings. I pretty much just take screenshots of my favorite free websites that I show you guys. Um, but you can see there's pretty much no economic news today. There is a three-year note auction, mildly important. Um, but the biggest thing coming out today is going to be Fed speakers. There, but beyond that, there really isn't that much news. Household credit report really isn't important. Um, here's the corporate news. You can see there's also it's also posted here too. There's no U.S. economic data of note today. So it's it's really just listening today and watching price action. Um, bunch of corporate news if you want to you know listen to that or, or read into it there's a couple upgrades i didn't really see anything new uh besides this kroger one which says the cfo is stepping down to fill a role at another public company which is cool i guess he's like ditch ditching kroger uh and then there's a bunch of earnings before open and then after open or after close sorry after open after close ftnt's on there too i know a lot of you guys know that ticker from trading with uh daffy so but let's get into it market is open Every week I'm dropping 1K on this Tesla, smart man. <laughs> I'll be mainly on Discord and Premium. Some good watches. Bet, bet, bet. Take it, yeah. Go wherever you want. I'm, I'm letting you guys know. Like, you can go and be comfortable wherever you want. If like sitting in Premium and just focusing on you and like. Just whatever tickers, that's fine. If you want to go sit and trade floor and be with everybody, if you want to be in here, that's fine too. It's, it's really whatever you want. You have options for everything now, so it's whatever you guys want. <clears throat> I just want you to be comfortable. That is the most important uh, aspect of trading, in my opinion, is being comfortable. If you don't know like how to just be here and be you know chill, be ready to go, that's a problem. If you're, if, how many of you, seriously, like be honest with yourself, how many of you even woke up this morning and formed a game plan of your own for anything for any charts and i'm not i'm not talking about i'm not talking about saying it to yourself and 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 going yeah i think spy is going to do this or that i'm not talking about theoretical game plans i'm talking about 
concrete, if it does this, I'm doing this. If it does that, I'm doing that. Game plans. Who all actually made game plans this morning? <clears throat> that right there. The huge first step that you guys are not doing if you aren't doing it. You know, it's, it's very, very important. <clears throat> Giving yourself that initial... Sorry, I'm like <clears throat> losing my voice still. Uh, but the... The initial part of the day, you know, getting that game plan, breaking down what you think is going to happen past this or past that, you know, having a bullish and a bearish scenario for yourself before the day has begun is very important. And then during the day, you know, you're going to take your live trades, your mental reps, you're going to do all that um, from practicing the different types of entries, the different types of retest, you know, using the different types of candlesticks we like to use in here. Uh, and then after, you know, let's say the market's closed or you're just done trading and the market's still trading, doesn't matter, um, you know, the after effect okay, how was my game plan? How did that work? And then maybe if you took some trades or mental reps, go look at those too. All right, how did these do? And then truly visualize, what did I do? What could I have done better? What happened? Like, seriously, go over the chart. Left to right. Tell the tell the story of the chart. If you guys have watched the latest BB course, the big topic in that course is storytelling. That's something I do in here in these streams every single day, every single week for the past couple years now. Every, on all my videos, you know, it's, it's all just visualizing. It's all just breaking down. Okay, this is what's happening. This is what can happen, you know, just kind of talking about the different scenarios and then understanding which one probably has a higher probability. You know, if we have multiple higher lows, we're holding above today's open, we're, we're breaking above this blah, blah, blah level, you know, whatever's there. That's like five confirmations for bulls, right? So our, our probability has increased that this trade is possible or going to work out for us, right? because of these amount of confirmations. And that's what we want to get into. And then vice versa. You know, let's say we have something telling us otherwise and we're trying to get in still. We're just telling ourselves, I want to make a bunch of money. Yeah, you know, you're not going to. You're, you're going to feel the pain because <laughs> you're arguing with the trend. Because you're, like yesterday. This is, Yesterday was a great example. And this is why I hope all of you watch the newest video. And this is why I made this public to everybody because this video is so crucial. It, it literally is visualizing. But watch this video. It covers yesterday's SPY triple Q breakdown. Uh, but in short, we had a lower open, you know, until we retook this level and pushed over this should not have been bullish, really. I mean, I'm not saying grab puts at the open, but I'm saying you should be short against this level until we see something overtake it, right? And that's just pure order of operations. And if you're getting that wrong this early on, then you just need more reps. You know, you shouldn't really sit here and beat yourself up. But then they broke a new low, you know, whatever, made it down to the area where most likely bulls would at least show up short term. They didn't just show up short term. They ended up retaking 492.50, sitting on top of it one, two, and a third time even closing above it. So pretty strong show of hands by bulls at 492.50 yesterday. So what does that give us today? What information does that give us today, guys? Based on yesterday's price action, seeing where we went during all that, t telling the story of the chart like I was just explaining, what does this chart tell us? Well, what does this level tell us? What does this level tell us? You know, it means, okay, well, we have a clean, if we get a clean break of 492.50, that's going to possibly give us a really good move. Maybe even see some retest plays away from it. Maybe we see them fail and then, and then close back and they retake it. Next thing you know, that's where the bigger bull move comes from. You know, having different scenarios, having a set game plan of like, all right, I'm in as long as it's doing this. If it's in this or it breaks that, I'm out, you know. Uh, if it hits this, I'm taking profits. I'm scaling out. I'll raise my target. I'll raise my stop loss for my last contract, blah, blah, blah. You know, just really breaking everything down before you're doing it is what I'm trying to ask. You know, make, make sure you guys are going over whatever you're about to do before you do it. Therefore, when you get into the trade, you understand most of the variables in front of you beforehand. You're not sitting here like, oh, I didn't think it would do this. I didn't think it would do that. You know, don't, don't, don't say that. Don't say, I hope, I dream, I wish. Don't say these things. It's, it's detrimental. No, none of them will have an impact like Powell. Powell's the king. But yeah, be sure to drop a like on the stream. Hopefully you guys enjoy some of the breakdowns. The game plan is on the bottom left of the chart for Spy and Triple Q. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the ranting there. Just again, breaking down, visualizing, storytelling, you know, how to, how you guys really should be treating yourself every single day, how, how you should be going through the routine every single day. <clears throat> I 
Uh, but we do have a higher open on Spy. I believe we have one on Triple Qs as well. Uh, and we are up against the previous day high, rejecting under 493.75 right now on Spy. Also trying to hold under today's open. So maybe a potential sign bears are still here. They want to reject this and bring it down to 492.50. Who knows? Uh, the triple Qs are also up against the previous day high and rejecting. <clears throat> SPX, same area spy, pretty normal. IWM getting a little bit of a hammer at the open. Fire stepping in short term on that chart. Uh, these charts you really should only be looking at these time frames. But the 10 year, uh, and Daffy talked about this too. Uh, no, he talked about the dollar, my bad. He was talking about how there was a lot of consolidation here and it broke up. But, si but same conversation. A lot of consolidation here, and we're towards the top of it now after two consecutive very bullish candles for the 10 year, which is potential bearish pressure on the uh, actual equity market. Again, guys, the longer the dollar goes up, the longer that the 10 year goes up, the longer that there's pressure and money moving out of the equity market into these sectors which means that they're taking it away from SPY. So this is short-term bearish for the stock market, but until we see more, you can't sit here and be like, well, this is the only reason I'm sure. Like, that's a great reason to be initially, you know, cautious, but I wouldn't say this is a good reason to stop yourself from still trading longs until we see more pressure, uh, but we'll see. But short-term, not a good sign. And yeah, if you're in the Discord, make sure you're utilizing it correctly. Um, posting in game plans and levels every morning, posting in daily updates channel every morning, posting a weekly watch list every Sunday or Monday if the market's closed. Uh, Bueller and Leland TA, if you have premium or lifetime, posting in there every single day now. So make sure you guys are looking around to the different channels. Trying to be very active in the Discord as well as on the streams without killing myself. <laughs> It's also nice to post the system differently, um, just to kind of show people how to really like tell the story of the chart. Whose name is Keep It Simple Stupid? That's a good name. That's a great name. Oh, is that Detouch? It is. <laughs> Yo, your background is crazy. Todo. <laughs> uh, Q, strong rejection of 430. AMD at PDL. Tesla pushing over previous day close. Headed to 18250s. So what, like big money went from equities to Forex? Um, you could say that in a sense, but it's different. <clears throat> the dollar and the 10-year bonds, you have bonds that people are getting into because they're safe. <clears throat> but yes, essentially like that. It's also commodities. It's not just, it's not just bonds. It's not just the dollar. I just don't like to talk about this stuff because it's not how I trade. But it is what the market is doing. I like to be aware of the market, but at the same time, this isn't really important to how I like to trade. I'm just focused on the levels. Like right now, we're looking for bulls over 494.17. Well, I'm looking for some more bearish pressure to set up under today's uh, open. We actually failed to close under that on SPY, which would have been a good sign for bulls short term. Yeah, I was going to say, I believe Qs are still holding under those, so this still looks like crap. Um, but, but back to what I was saying, though, Timmy, talking to you. Uh, money rotates all the time, though. You know, people move from this into commodities. People from move commodities into, uh, I'm drawing a blank, 
foreign exchange bonds. I mean, really anything you think of. You can think of all ty types of markets money moves into. There's all types of money markets, what they're called. <clears throat> um, but it's just it's just timing of things, seasonality, uh, rotation to catalyst. You know, it's it's all kinds of variables that go into this and why m money shifts like that. But it, it happens all the time just in between equities alone. You know, let's say like tech's been ripping it for the longest time. And let's say some big news comes out and, and then over the next few months, the market's pulling back. Well, a lot of the time when the tech stocks initially pull back, the staple stocks will go up because people are pushing their money into something that's undervalued or safe at the same time. Because one, these markets haven't been ripping, tech has. Two, uh, these are safe companies that I don't think are going away. So this is why you would see money rotate into the safer. Some Sometimes they're, sometimes they're called safe havens even. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole other, it's a whole other topic. It's not just like, it's not really that simple to talk about. <clears throat> We'd have to sit here and actually go over some stuff, but in short, in in a quick breakdown, that is essentially why you see that though. And and what I just said between tech and staples, this happens across major money markets. Uh, like I said, from commodities to uh, equities to foreign exchange to bonds, yields, all that stuff. <clears throat> money rotates. Money's not stupid. Speaking of money is not stupid, money is moving up higher on the SPY chart. We're very close to the bullish breakout. And we do have a higher open, so that's a good sign. I mean, all they have to do is hold. Uh, but at the same time, like, Qs aren't looking that hot. They build some bearish pressure here under 430s. This is going to start looking a lot more attractive for bearish setups than bulls. But right now, we do have a higher open. All, they do, all they've done is pull back. We didn't even break previous day close. So still a little bit more bullish than bearish right now on these charts. But we'll see what's going to go on here in a second. Need to see more information, really. But good higher open. The only one holding its gains is SPY uh, from the higher open so far. <clears throat> I have such a tiny grasp of economics about the money markets. I need to learn more. But BB system comes first. No, and, that, and that's the thing. Take your time. Like, these are things you're not going to just sit down one day and be like, all right, today I'm going to just straight up learn economics. Like, no, you, <laughs> you're going to learn this stuff over time. I wouldn't try to beat it into your head super quick. <clears throat> Take your time. It, but it, this is a great time to learn about this stuff, though, because you're literally witnessing it live. Um, but, but rotation, though, sector rotation, money rotation, this happens all the time. So it's really just about learning and, and getting experience. You can see the 10 is actually pulling back. The dollar is pulling back. So this could bring some good short-term pressure on the equity market. Which is what we are trading. SPY, Triple Q, SPX, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, AMD, Tesla. All equities. <clears throat> AMD's breaking the lows of 171.10. Jesus. I did not think that was going to be dumping like that. Tesla's got a really nice pump. I saw a few of you mention it, but damn. That's just different. <clears throat> AMD and Tesla were actually two of the three tickers I posted this morning. I believe Coin was the other, uh, was the tertiary pick. Wow, they got a nice hammer at the open, holding 115.80, holding 118. Nice little move up so far. Nothing crazy, but some more base building on this chart, and that'll look really good short term. You see 115.80's break, though. Be very cautious, because I believe this is breaking. Yeah, this broke a recent hammer. You got this hammer support here before they kept going. They just broke under that yesterday, so... New lows holding is not a good thing for this chart, short term, because that, that could bring a lot more blood. You might be seeing closer to 100 if that does end up holding under in the next couple weeks for coin. Spy is trying its best to push over 49417. See if we can get to the two day ago high supply mixed in with our all time high at 496.05. Q's also rebounding pretty well. We talked about how the higher open was good um, because this gives them room to reject the supply and and hold things and still give us bullish setups. Whereas if it just did this and then broke under support and their and previous day closes up here, this would look like shit. Uh, but previous day close is still here, so good support still in sight. They're actually trying to see if they can hold 429.15 as a higher low. We'll see though. If not, look for the flush under 428, 45. 
if it rejects this, maybe even get into an early position. But I, I don't know. Early positions today aren't really a good choice. A lot of Fed speakers. And I don't, we don't really give a shit what they're saying, but there's going to be a lot of movement if anything weird is said or if the tone shifts or if they're like, actually, guys, I don't know what Powell was talking about on 60 Minutes. I, I believe the interest rates are going to be cut in March. He's on crack. He's joking. It's not going to happen in May. It's going to happen in March. Uh, market's pumping big time. But if nothing new comes out, everybody sticks to the script. I believe we probably will just sit in our in our range. Um, but new all-time highs are still very possible. Breaking support, making it down below 490s is very possible. So really just being an open book to every scenario. Not going to sit here and try to, you know, cut one in half just because of a certain Fed speaker or because of something someone might have said or so what someone might say. We're going to just play the levels. Play the trend. Lower highs, higher lows. Where are those at? Why was he speaking on a Sunday? Should be illegal. It's because that's when 60 Minutes goes. But BB system come up. Oh, I already read that. PLTR out of me. Good job, Sand Dollar. Uh, Fool said tech is breaking below previous day close. XLK. That is by far your largest spy sector. Which is probably why we have weakness on the triple Q sector and why it doesn't really look that bad on SPY. So we do have a little bit of slowdown happening here. Good call out by Fool. Yo, seriously, that was a really good call out. I hope you guys read that and, and go and check those out. That's a really nice mention. Because that is exactly why Qs look a lot worse than SPY. And I had not looked at that yet. It's a good call out. Ooh, they're even getting a good flush under it. Good call out, man. Right as you said it, like, a big fat-ass red candle just started coming on the screen. That's awesome. See, you're no fool. And, like, right there, are we going to make a billion dollars off that call out by fool? No, it's not about every, like, call out by somebody being like, oh, I'm going to make money off this. Like, no, just short-term direction. It's like, oh, okay, he's instantly telling us tech is a lot worse than the overall market. Which is important because of what, guys? Why is it important to know that tech is weaker than the overall market right now? And I'm talking intraday, by the way. Intraday. I swear to God, if somebody's just sitting here like, how is tech weaker? I will hit you. Don't listen to Bueller. Am fool. <laughs> Tech is big, exactly, but what 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 about them? What big in what way? Nice little eighty percent entry for me on spy out for a quick fifty percent. Healthcare made a new all time high. Great call out by Maddie. Exactly, Timmy, the biggest weight of spy. That is why it is it is important. Great, great answer. Daffy also saying biggest sector, which is kinda cool that uh Maddie Clams is coming in here and saying healthcare is hitting a new all time high because in what ranking is healthcare? Who remembers? It might even change by now. I'll look. Okay, no, yeah, it did change a little bit, but it's still in the same place. It's get, it's gained a lot more percentage of spy now. Two, exactly. They're second. Great call out. Or great answer. Great call out. See, I'm already lost. <laughs> but great answer, yes. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, I left the inside bar levels here. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Just because we didn't close outside of it. Nor did we here. I mean, they, they hit... I took a fib from... the. If you go from the, the close of this day to the low of the move... No, wait, why did I draw that? Hold up. Oh, no, no, no. Never mind. It was from level to level. And then it gave us the halfway point. We went up to it. To kind of just measure our impulse move, and we hit it perfectly. Slowed down since then a lot more than we probably wanted. Um, really nice hammer level. If this closes anywhere like a candle like this today, a lot of shorts got fucked. That's all I got to say. I'm, I, a lot of people got screwed on this if they're a short and they end up getting... Because we didn't really get a close outside of this range. We did get an open, which is very good for short, short term if they close some profits here and, and become the liquidity to pump this up more. But we'll see. Uh, Rambo said, yo, B, I got a bag from that Tesla call-out from Bieler Lidentier. 
What do you mean tech is weak? Yeah, thank you, Nomly. <laughs> yeah, Vinny, that's that's exactly how I was like trying to like <laughs> trying to talk, but with like text. Thank you. Yo, Rambo, what are you doing? Oh, I gotta look at Discord now. I've got to look. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you <laughs> Shout out to Rambo. He's personally buying the dip on Tesla and bringing it up by himself. <laughs> now, for real though, Rambo, it's kind of funny that you're uh, that you're buying more shares and stuff because I actually have a lot of friends buying shares of Tesla around here because I like I know you have a pretty good average. I know two of my friends have, but I have one friend who has an insane average who bought before both the splits. And even he's been buying, so it's like, I don't know. Like, all the Tesla believers are buying right now. Like, all the people I know to be a true Tesla believer. Not not just people like me who hype up Tesla. and Like, like I love Elon, I love Tesla, but I, I haven't been a true believer. I haven't been buying shares every other week or every other month, you know. Uh, or, or when it's time. But, like, right here, great time to. Proceeds to pick up 50 shares. <laughs> But no, good. Uh, shout out to Rambo though. Always keeping the energy alive in the chats. Always keeping the energy alive in the streams. <clears throat> and seriously, thank you for the donation, dude. You don't have to do any donations or anything. Uh, your your presence is is a gift enough. Seriously, but thank you again, Rambo. Can't thank you enough. Ruth Chris on Rambo. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, it did say that. I forgot there's messages on it. Lead test on the one minute, not sure if you'd call a lead test. It depends what chart you're looking at. AMD, ouch. Yeah, AMD looks like sheesh. I mean, did, did they keep dumping? Oh my lord! Oh my lord! What is this thing doing? You got like Tesla doing one thing and then you got AMD doing another. Ooh, that hurts. <laughs> Spy's just hammering at support. Hold up, I gotta see triple Q chart. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> There's some selling happening. Honestly, uh, healthcare moving up at an insane pace. Discretionary holding, comms holding. Banks not really hurting us or helping, and then tech falling. Like, it's like everything's balanced right here. Like, we're like slightly moving down, but not at a pace that's really profitable unless you're just buying the perfect, uh, like highs and then you know, taking your profits at a normal rate, not just hoping to make a big bag. Yo, Eric, are you in stream? Oh, yeah, guys, uh, uh, let's get some Rambo emojis in here. I even added to the pile. There we go. You are here? All right, awesome. Uh, in which direction did you draw this fib? I believe you drew it from the high to the low. Is that what I'm seeing? High to the low. I'm just like triple checking. I was reading your trade review. Holy crap, I look back and there's like a million Rambos on my screen. <laughs> I'm like, I thought my chat was glitching, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Alright, so let's see here. Entrance 2.8, and I exited when I hit my target percentage in my first level preset. Holy shit, 46% on that? Bro, holy good stuff. See what I was telling you, though? You just get one good trade, and it gets you really nice percentages. Like, if you just don't overstep your boundaries, Eric, you will be able to do that over and over and over again. I just realized the short scenario is not showing for the triple Qs. Uh, let me look back this, sorry. Alright, so you were just purely going off of the high to the low. 
It retook the open with the entry we talk about. Failed to hold a new low. And then as it made a higher low, good patience. Seriously, round of applause to your patience. I think that's really what got you a good entry on this, was the fact that you were able to wait to get all that information, see it retake the golden pocket of that drawdown. Yeah, of the drawdown. And then, like, that little reset candle. Hold on, what time frame is that, dude? I gotta see this. That's the one. All right, so he took a fib from the high of the first move when it went up to the low of this move because he was just trying to see, you know, does it retake this? Is it going to reject this and give me a good play to the downside? And it did give him a good initial rejection. Very strong candle in the one minute. Very strong candle following as well as wicking away from 49.50, which is the next level. Um, another one rejecting. And then it's like the next candle. I was like, just kidding. Uh, retook, retook. And then he entered on this candle. What I like about this, let's remove this, is of this candle, right? Of this candle before this one. I almost promise this is holding something. Like, if you go of the low to the high before the slowdown, kind of like how you would do on a big move, except this is a lot, like, more compound, more more tight together because you're drawing it between two one-minute candles. But this is something you can visually see. Um, i just drawing it to show you. But you can see, like, of the previous candle, uh, of this of the whole move here, it's holding the perfect part, like, the worst part, the, the best part, I should say, the, the furthest it could go without making it bearish, basically. Uh, a, a true reset breather type candle, you know, and if those close any lower, sometimes it does bring the draw down and then that's where the bounce comes from. If this holds, of course, if it fails, you know, it, it can dump, but that's, that's a reset candle. That's what I call a reset candle, a, a, the next candle after that just kind of holds the higher part of that candle and vice versa. You know, if you have like right here, we broke a new low, we retested under, but it didn't really get past the 50% of that candle, you know, in my head, that's a bearish reset candle. Whereas this was a bullish reset candle, right? <clears throat> if you've gone through the courses and stuff, you guys know these terms. But it's just cool seeing Eric's trade. And good job. He said he took profit into the 49.57. Okay, good, good, good. So he took he took it into the previous day open, previous day high range. <clears throat> and he has the top of the meat of the inside bar, which is just up here. Good calls, man. Good calls. Yo, seriously, that is a fire-ass trade. Round of applause to Eric. Don do with over two hundred percent. Oh, and Palantir, he's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, back to YouTube. You guys are important. David Ballard gifting a membership, dude. Holy. Uh, JB McFadden, you were gifted the membership by David Ballard. You did not have to do that. Appreciate you, David. Maddie Ice, yo yo, good morning. <laughs> What's up, Maddie? The Rambos are still consuming chat. Yes, let them, let them consume chat. And yeah, super kind of David. That was cool. But you know, you guys are like, it's only five bucks, but like, it's still, it's not about that. Like, it's not like, oh, it's only five bucks. You're literally giving someone a month of time on the channel, not just for the private videos, but the watches I've done, the streams, you know, everything. Uh, which I did want to talk to you all, to all about that uh, at the end of this week. I think Friday when we're doing the full day stream, I want to plan what we're going to start doing for some of the private streams. I'm still going to do my normal stream, so if you're here and you're not paying, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. But I wanted to do some extra streams for the uh, members as well. Sixty percent on spy poots. Let's go. Good job, Alexis. How do y'all trade out west here? LOL, I had to get up too early. <laughs> Where are you at? California or you're you're in central? Are you in mountain or central? Or even beyond that? If you're in if you're in Cali time, I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> Green said 9 p.m. bedtime. <laughs> Adam lives in California, so he lives this life. 
out of spy poots at previous day close great call out king carnage real quick what was the reasoning for entry what was the reasoning for exit just give me a quick breakdown if anybody shorted this move please tell me exactly what made you short it i just want to see i'm really drawing out answers from you to help other people out Uh, deep also he said 80 percent vwap entry solid spy future scalp just took profit at 30 ticks good stuff deep you know it's funny deep i had somebody in lifetime i think you, you could help out probably um they went in here i'll show you so they came into chat and they said i've searched but i haven't found anything yet have you done or thought about a video on applying the ta or bb system to nasdaq futures or spy futures i said there isn't a need for a video there's nothing different about futures and normal equities when charting them I even shared a link the other night to spy futures chart with TA routine levels. This is the case for any chart, to be honest. Crypto, equity, ETF, futures, you know, so on and so on. And um, it's kind of funny, like, here you are. I didn't even think about you or, or anybody in chat, but there's tons of people, you know, who apply my charting system or our charting system to anything and don't even really think twice about it. And then you have those people like this person, which I'm not getting on to them. This is something all of us can get stuck up on. Um, but just kind of getting stuck on the whole fact of like, oh, it is different. Like, it is, but it isn't, you know? <laughs> when charting it, they're not different at all. Arizona? Oh, okay. Damn, we got a mountain timer in here. Or is that... No, Arizona's on their own thing. I forgot, Leland doesn't even exist on our, like, spectrum. As a person who lives in Cali, I went... <laughs> Deuce. Nam Lee said, Maddie, I'm on Cali time, literally fighting sleep to be here. Pure willpower. <laughs> Damn, this is funny. Oh my god, chat's moving too quick. This never happens. I posted a quick trade and trade results. I'll check it out here in a minute. Good call out, Maddie. Good call out, Alexis. Uh, rejection of previous day high. NASDAQ weakness as spy features took overnight highs. Took short. Good call out by Wise Trader. Good morning, paper hands. Good to see you. Deuce said, I like the retest of the recent low, the 80% entry. Waited for a candle to close and took it out at the next BB level. Round of applause to you. King Carnage said, entered at the projection of previous day high after making a new high of day. Got out at previous day close. And that's been an area of support for four touches now. I'm screenshotting all this. You little geniuses. Great breakdowns on y'all's trade reviews. And good call out. It was Fool earlier on who presented to us the earlier on tech weakness in the overall market. He pointed out tech was weak before anybody else brought it up. I didn't even look at it yet either. Uh, comms have now produced more weakness. Banks have gotten weaker. Uh, discretionary just pulled back. I'm not going to say weak because they're still holding a really good area. Um, and even healthcare after making a new all-time high has slowed down. God, AMD actually hit that level. Are you kidding me? That is a nasty move from AMD to the downside today. Hey, I was cool with the video moving higher. I didn't want the ultimate high to be 666. I'm not even religious, and I thought that would be fucked up. 
Nice bearish and gold, um, bearish and golfing. Bearish and golfing if they close past the wick. Maybe see a good touch of that overnight fill tomorrow. Who knows? 10 year and the dollar slowed down too. It's not like the, the spy and all that's by themselves. Everything else slowed down too. Oh, and let's get a quick view of the daily time frame real quick. Good working carnage chart. All right, so try to try to look past everything here. So we have the old all time high. We broke a new high. I drew the fib. We've just been holding the midterm or hidden retest, right? Very, very short term, very hidden. They end up continuing this in a very ugly manner daily candles wise. We have a combination of catalyst news leading up to news, earnings, all that good stuff. Uh, we closed a new all time high. Almost made an inside bar, pulled down, uh, got a lower open and a rejection, and it came all the way down and held the exact same area again, the hidden retest, the midterm retest. Since then, uh, and I don't know why I have this here still. I think I was just showing people uh, week to week analysis. Ignore that fib. But basically, what we're looking for here is the old highs to hold, or 490. So we got a little bit of an area here, about a dollar sixty here on the spy daily. Where even if this does pull back, it's still not you know the end of the world. Now, if it rejects this and closes under that, that can definitely leave more room open uh, to intraday probabilities of reaching these levels of 485 potentially. Over the next couple days, couple weeks, who knows? But essentially, it's kind of what we're looking at right now. Damn, Tesla just jumped like a percent, I think. Yeah. That one's nuts. Meta falling through the floor. F you, Netflix. All right, let's go back to the chart. And good job, by the way. The reason I was proud of all of you guys for taking these trades uh, and taking those shorts and, and taking your profits, I'm really just proud of you because you're not blind to the fact that 49250 is still sitting there. Uh, I saw King Carnage talk about it too. He said, you know, we've literally hit that area four times. <laughs> so good call out. I'm glad to see you guys are aware of the short-term price action. Very proud of you guys being aware of yourself and taking profits and, and really collecting some of your gains. Those, those were insane trades that you guys took. Plus... You just took some short-term bearish trades. That's essentially what you can say. I took some short-term bearish trades because all we really got was a rejection of previous day high, a break under today's open, and then a flush to previous day close. So yeah, you do have a really good scenario here. It's just not the craziest one. You know, it's just a really good trade. Round of applause to you guys, though. Seriously. How many of you guys traded SPY or SPX? Um, I saw deep traded SPY futures. What I saw Deuce and King Carnage. Did y'all trade SPY or did y'all trade SPX? Or Qs. You don't have to trade SPY at all. You can be trading tech if you want. I like to watch crypto to practice levels since the market never closes. Ah, oh, look at that. See? Same thing with NQ and Qs. Okay, uh, deep, I like it. Maddie said, tried calls in that wicker taking current day open. Cut the new low. Bless my soul. <laughs> well, at least you made sense of your trade, though. I, I can't sit here and be like, well, at least he held the, he liked the you know, hold of open and he wanted to see the push. We just didn't get a break over previous day high. That was it. That was the only thing that really could have stopped you from your trade. Um, but once this candle came into place, it was like, all right, well, hold up. <laughs> so make sure you're cutting your losses at the right time. But great job posting your play regardless of being a win or a loss. Out 49250 puts, 80%, 1050 fib long red candle. Good stuff, Susan. 
out at 492.50. Another one that makes sense. Great job, Susan. Oh, you don't got to tell me, Duffy. I've been trying to tell everybody here to sh don't short until we see this next level break. You don't got to tell me, man. <clears throat> Hold up. I need to post Susan's screenshot. A bounce here is very possible. That's why I'm proud of so many people taking profits into this level. Because they're not going to be the exit liquidity, and I like that. I don't want you guys being the first person in this trade just because you want to make a bunch of money <laughs> king carnage i love your twitter dude i'm not even a titans fan or anything else but i love watching your tweets and then uh i'm ready for dune as well i'm so ready <laughs> oh you were the person who i saw the pft tweet from I don't even know if I, I follow PFT or not, but I say you say I feel the same, and I was, I was laughing at that because, uh, yeah, that was pretty funny. Sorry, I was just looking at your Twitter. You're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Dune 1 was elite. It was. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of the old Dune, but a couple weeks ago, me and one of my friends watched it, and I was actually impressed. I'm not going to lie. When I watched the original Dune, I was like, okay, wow, this is actually... Okay, the one Mimi thing was like the shield suits they wear. Um, that was pretty Mimi, but besides that, like it was actually really good for how old it was. Spy's still trying to hold new lows, guys. 492.50 is not holding so far. We have a little bit of time here still, another minute in this five-minute candle. One minute struggling, too. You have an inside bar, inside bar, no new low. So basically everything relies on 492.25. If it makes a new low, it's probably going to keep dumping. If it does, we'll zoom out. We'll see what else is under this. Love Dune. They did a decent job with the movie. Usually movies fall way short of the book. Book is epic, though. I have heard that. I have heard the the Dune book is... Which, I guess I hear that about most things, too, to be fair. That the books are always, like, 300 times better. <laughs> That's good to hear, though. I'll probably have to... I don't, like, I don't read a whole lot. But I probably will read that Dune book. Because I have heard a lot of... A lot of the same kind of comment. If it wicks this and closes above 492.50s, massive pump. If it breaks this, probably getting a short-term pullback. Probably read the original book before most of you were born. <laughs> probably. We're not allowed to ask a, a lady's age, so sorry. Apple being propped up and Microsoft is drowning. Good call out by Sand Dollar. Peoples, are you putting are these are these steak emojis? It's so influential on any sci-fi or fantasy story that came out in the last forty years. Have you got into a trade today? No, I have not. I've been chilling. I've been doing updates. Now there were a bunch of trades taken by these guys. They all took trades from break of today's open. After the reject at, this was after the rejection of previous day high, which is this level right here. A lot of these guys took trades from this rejection or under the new low. So they did good. And look at that, guys. They're retaking it. Probably going to see a nice move to the upside now. They create a lot of liquidity right here. You might even want to mark that low. I I'm not going to. We'll just kind of keep it on the same frame here. But that low is very important. 
I'd like to see this retake on bigger time frames though, like a five minute candle, and then maybe over the next like 30, 45 minutes on the 15 minute, see that it's still holding 49250. That would give me extra confidence that buyers are trying to give a nice move to the upside from here. Uh, if not though, we see a fail over the next few minutes. They're probably just giving us a not as obvious move for more downside. Again, sometimes they're not just going to give you a perfect close under and then dump it. They're going to give you a close under, give you a bunch of mess to deal with, and then give you the next cl uh, close under that's just as clean as this one. They're just doing it in not as timely manner, so they don't make it as obvious to everybody. Because if everybody saw it, then nobody's making money. We all grab calls. Those aren't moving. Now, I'm talking about like literally if every dollar on the market grabbed calls, nothing would nothing would happen. So they got to make it not obvious. They have to create liquidity. They have to create opportunity. It all makes sense. Really good retake of 49250s though. Uh, what the steak emojis? What's with these? These are actually kind of cool looking. Josh, can you look at mine? Your steak? I was going to say, peoples, if you were, like, paying attention to stream, I'm not getting on to you. If you were paying attention to stream, there were probably, like, 50 people who grabbed that same trade with you, man. That And, I, and that's, I'm not getting on to you. I just want you to realize, like, you, and this is to everybody, not just to peoples, but all of you do this. You'll be like, can you check out my trade? And then I'm, like, looking at it. I'm like, this is the same thing as the last five I just looked at. Like, you guys need to pay attention to each other is all I'm saying. You guys are a lot, you got, a lot of you guys are very smart, very intuitive. You know, I think a lot of you, and including me, get in your own way. But I think a lot of you guys are very, very, very smart and ready to go for this. Because a lot of you have been doing reps. Like, peoples, you probably have thousands of reps. Now you're good. But I was just letting you know, like, that's, that's, that's the, and that's how you should know if you're ready or not. Like, if you can't break down what everybody else in the stream did, you, you probably didn't look at the chart. Like, peoples should look at this chart and be like, well, the only bullish opportunity was maybe this hammer and then the move into previous day high. You know, maybe look for more bullish opportunity here. And then he knows, okay, well, if it breaks under this, you know, we're probably going down to the close right here previous day. And then we can look for more information there. We can see what's next. You know, he knows that. That's how you know you can read the levels well. If you can't look at this chart and tell me where was their bullish and where was their bearish opportunity today, you're, you haven't been reviewing enough. Or, or you just need more time. You just need more reps. It's not, it's not like you're a stupid kind of thing. There's, there's nothing to do with IQ. <laughs> But that's how I, that's how you should know if you can read the levels or not. If you can sit there and tell me where was their bullish, where was their bearish opportunity, regardless of it failing or not. Like right here, I'm, I'm talking about everything that works and doesn't work. Like right here, 40% entry under 490.250. Oh, but the next candle, it failed. Okay, that's a very normal thing to happen with a 40% entry. That's why it's called 40%. But I'm glad to hear you took a very nice trade, Jay. And thank you for always letting me use you as an example. Even though you don't let me, I just do it anyway. <laughs> I have three rib, rib, rib eyes in the freezer. I bought at Costco like four months ago, waiting for a legendary trading week slash month. Damn, we need to go to Timmy's house. Holy shit, Tech fell a lot more than Spy did. You have a potential bearish retest under 42750s on triple Qs, which is pretty interesting. But they at least retested a majority of the previous day, which is a very good sign. Now, if they had done what Despite this did and just did one candle reversal, it wouldn't look as nice. But the fact that I actually dumped, hit a good uh, lower high, as well as a higher low from yesterday. Creator said, I think I think Daffy likes Triple Q. <laughs> Watch this candle be just like this one.
Yeah, the 30 minute's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. When I first started trading, the 30 minute was the first time frame I wanted to be good at, because it's just like, the amount of time that goes by is kind of nice. Like, you could literally go like, work out, or take a shower, or come back, and only like two or three candles have hit your screen. Maybe, maybe two. You know, it's kind of nice just having that like calm view of everything. Can't lie though, a hammer towards the higher low of yesterday. I mean, we're still bullish by the way on everything. It's just intraday wise, it's all about timing. Like if, if you're sitting here as like a day trader, but you're looking at like the daily or the four hour, you're probably still bullish. But if you're someone who is here on the five minute, you're probably short term bearish under this level until you see a retake of it, which they're trying to do right now as spies flipping and holding green. I don't know, that, that might have just been liquidity grabbing for a, a nice pump. Who knows? On SPY, at least. We'll see if the triple Qs turn into this looking kind of look on the 5 and 15 here in a little bit. But that's a good sign so far. Carter said 73 people here and get them likes up on the stream. Oh, 73 people here need to get them likes up on the stream. <laughs> Yeah, make sure to like the stream, guys. If you guys actually take these streams serious and go back and review some of them, you'll see there's live trades taken every day, whether they're by me or my members. There's tons of trades called out in here pretty much every day. Really good trades called out by the majority of you guys this morning, though. Credit to you. Yep, a 69, peoples. AKA the 90% entry. Now, the one thing that's kind of ruining the 90% though on SPY is Qs, because they're perfectly rejecting the level that SPY is perfectly closing over. So I would I would say that ruins it a little bit, but we'll see what happens here. Qs are still pulling away. Remember, the initial triggers for shorts on triple Qs were breaking 428.50. Next level is 427.50, and they're breaking even that. Rejection of 429.15 to 430 is short-term bearish. We saw that this morning. The loss of 425 can bring more blood, which would be the bottom of the zone underneath. So right now you should be short-term bearish until you see a retake of 427.50. On SPY, you're short-term bullish until you see a break of 492.50 as well as the recent low. Uh, but we're still short-term bullish on this, short-term bearish on triple Qs. So that's why a lot of people are just kind of sitting cash right now until we see both of those on the same page. SPX, though, looking a lot more like triple Qs rejecting. Previous day close right now. This could be a very good entry point for anybody who has not gotten into any shorts yet. And you could leave your stop at 49.42. Oh, I need to adjust my sound. This is so wrong. New low being made. Up 20% on same days already. Trimming some there. See if they hold the new lows now. See if the runners can get more. But 20% in like 5 seconds. I'm okay with that. Let's see if we can get more though. Ooh, Triple Q's making a nice new low of day. Very nice move to the downside. We talked about the potential bearish retest at 427.50. The scenario ended up holding still. Spy struggling. Bulls keep popping up on these on that chart. Very good move, though, by Triple Q's for anybody who's been shorting that one. Let's see if I do. Ooh, IWM's actually building base. Are they going to go fill their gap? That'd be clean. 
10 years still taking a dip dollar still just kind of reversing to the downside so kind of leaving opportunity for anybody right now Ooh, amd making another new low sheesh Tesla slowed down against 187s, kind of. See if that slows down more. <laughs> Spies flipping. Spies holding. And Qs are flipping. Nice. Still in a good position with the chart, too. So anybody who is still in shorts, you got a really good second chance of getting out of plays or getting some extra profits. Anybody who's long or looking to go long, it's a good sign for you as you can still see an initial sign of bulls showing up, but you need a lot more to show up here before you're in anything. But we'll see. We still got a little bit of time left. You're itching for bulls. <laughs> if you're itching for them, <laughs> that's a problem. H kind of doing good on the intraday. Fuck you, Netflix, of course. Ooh, coin's been doing good. I know we talked about it just that one time, but they built a higher low from there, built up, hit that recent high. They're even trying to close up into there. Coin did good on the intraday chart. Nike did a Tesla. John Deere did a Tesla. That's a Burj Khalifa now. This is probably still the most wild chart in existence. Whoops. Yeah, we'll leave it. Yo, I need to remember that one. Walmart. Somebody remember Walmart. Zim looks pretty good. This did look good, but then it fell late, and now they have earnings, so it's like kind of awkward. Disney's still struggling with this high. They had that whole like inside 90% looking kind of entry going, and then they failed, and they're just still stuck here. Moderna holding a pretty good part of base. Eli Lilly, insane move to a new all-time high. <laughs> EPST building pretty good base above a recent... Uh, old. It was an old supply trying to hold the support now. So we'll see if that ends up holding out or not. Ulta still awkwardly holding this base. AFRM, 90%. 41.40s. Hmm. Oops. Oh, 
What's up, Chuck? How you doing, man? Definitely go back to the beginning of the stream if you want to get some quick breakdowns. We can give you, I can give you a summary here again in a minute, but I just went over a bunch of stuff, so I'll give you a chance to look around first. Headed to smack some golf balls. Congrats, everyone who killed it today. Well, that sounds fun, Maddie. Have fun, man. Make sure you guys have a water or something. Stay hydrated. I'm a pretty big advocate of uh, remaining hydrated at all times. Heading back into work. Love y'all. Keep them gains. You too, peoples. Have a great day, man. Thank you for being here. Thank you for dropping your review. I'm going to check it out here in a minute, by the way. But appreciate you. I gotta check it when he's gone, guys, so I can talk shit. <laughs> Constructive criticism? Nah, this is about to be the roast of peoples. Headed out, boys and girls. Don't overtrade. Thank you, Rambo. And he said, be safe as well. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. And you have a great day as well, Rambo. been posted some good info today too damn a lot Okay, you, you're just running premium today. Good stuff. <laughs> I like these new style posts, Leland. Like, you and me don't have to worry about as much. And we still get to do what we want. Delta Airlines doing good. Entered swings yesterday. Look at that, CJ. Oh my god, that is so clean. Okay, so I just went instantly to the daily. I saw supply. I saw short-term demand. That's all I did. Went from the top of the demand. Basically, I'm just going from where price held outside of this. So the top of this. Uh, to the first point of slowdown. So when they rallied, where did they slow down at? Here. So I'm grabbing the fib there. And this gives me a hidden retest point. So off of this base. So any buying that comes off this into this high... Holding the golden pocket and control point. You have a little bit of a close under than a hammer. No crazy move here. This probably screwed some people that were in that and that. And they're back up again after this candle. So a good second showing of holding of that midterm or hidden retest point. If USO goes above 69 tomorrow, I'll send B a ceramic marble. <laughs> uh, triple Q's hit previous day. Demand. Nice hammer candle. Good looks on that DAL chart, by the way, CJ. A 
Uh, good call by Ryan. Great call out. And yeah, they're kind of doing what we said. They closed under again, but they, they did it again. They're just creating liquidity to get some nice move to the upside. Because again, they're not going to make it obvious uh, for bears who are closing here. So that this would still make sense even if this was still falling. Uh, but they don't want to make it obvious. So they're not going to give us just a perfect candle close under and then dump it. They're not going to do that every single time. <clears throat> More times than not, they're going to give you a better retest, which we didn't ever really get one. Let's, let's go check the one minute. We'll see if there's something there. Inside candle, hammer, hammer, or sorry, doji, hammer, retake. So nothing there. This was like the most retest you got, and it was after holding a recent low. So nothing crazy here. So even on the one minute, really nothing selling to us that bears are still present and wanting to keep dump this. Even though they closed a new low, uh, or tried to close a new low, sorry, they pushed a new low, then closed out the same low. Hmm, interesting. It's weird to say this. I'm not trying to say anything, but like it could hold this and actually push through this area because of this little move here. Like I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but that amount of liquidity could actually send price to this area again. Where we saw previous day high and then today reject. XLE moving with strength, Oxy ahead of Chevron and Exxon Mobil. Good call up by Sand Dollar. I know him and Daffy have been watching energy very heavily. Mel wanting to see market rip over the opens of today. Now, I will say one sign of caution is that triple Qs have not retaken 42750s. They are still kind of in a bearish retest manner on that intraday time frame, while SPY is not anything like that at all. Lower high, lower high, lower high. <laughs> <laughs> Tug of war between the call outs. Hey, good use of the uh, arrows, Matty Clams. I like to see that you're just pointing it out to yourself. Good post by a lot of... I can't even just say Daffy. I keep trying to just say Daffy, but a lot of really good posts by a couple people in the trade floor and Discord. Good stuff, guys.
Triple Q, five minute high rejecting, eight EMA as well. Good call by Ryan at 50% fib from high of day to low of day. Creator, I think you're talking about Spy. Sandy Dollar said Walmart, strong bounce. No problem, Maddie. Mel said out of runner to 31% green. Good stuff, Mel. Looks like you guys are kicking ass all on your own. <laughs> Sometimes I like to mess with Leland. All right, trade review time. I got I got trades to catch up to. All right, so I should know a majority of these trades. Snagged calls on pre-market high support, hold, and jumped out to close of retest. Okay, so he took a nice move from uh, the break of previous, pre, uh, sorry, pre-market high, and he took profits into the previous day high. So he took calls into this. Got out for 25%. Grab a fib from the recent high to where price slowed down, like how it held support, so I entered on the next candle and got out once it closed under. Live and learn. Wait. Oh, okay, from the recent high to where price slowed down. Okay, I see that. Okay, simple trade. You were looking for a bullish retest. It failed. Pretty normal. Uh, one big thing that scares me, though, is this candle. It's not a three-bar play, which I know you didn't say that, but it's not a three-bar play. It's it's It opened lower than the close, right? So that it's almost like if you know what a Harami is or an inside candle or anything, it, it just essentially means slow down. Um, so, I mean, it's good risk. I'm not going to sit here and be like, that's a stupid retest. Like, no, it's good risk, but definitely a different sign. But good cut, too. I'm glad to see you didn't just enter here and then go i'll oh, just wait to see if it comes back because then you'd be in a lot more pain you probably wouldn't even have posted this if you held it down here uh so so good good cut i, I like that good cut and then also good attitude he said live and learn good cut uh snagged puts in the sweep of previous day high and then the lower high aimed for the gap fill let's see what he did okay so 14 over a 22 what is that who knows 14 over 22? What's 1,400 divided by 22? Sixty-three percent, dear lord. Okay, that's really good. Let's look at the trade now to see if it is good. So we have today's open. We have the move up. Okay, so he took a fib. So when we pushed under today's open over here, he drew a fib from the high to the low, and then as price came back up, and he only has one fib here, the 50%, it hit it, gave an inside candle, and then closed under, confirming the inside bar at the 50%. That is a super, super... I gotta see that on my own chart. That is a super, super, super high probability trade. Look at that, too. I even have 493.75 right there. That's where he's looking. Inside bar. And then look, it closes under. 
that's his entry. Trim profits at the meet of the low or the recent low. And then keep runners towards the gap fill, which you could also have another in-between target. But he got to the gap fill, though. They filled over the, the uh, overnight move. Dude, that's, that's probably trade of the day. That's probably trade of the day. I know Peoples isn't here, but that's that's trade of the day. Oh, nice. Alexis got some big gains. 492 puts. 492. Okay, same one. Same one. Kick ass, Alexis. Shane also getting it. So he liked it. 32% spy poots. Picked it up on the rejection of 494.17. Look at that. 494.17. So he liked where, uh, like where Deuce was getting into calls here and then cutting. Uh, we had a different trader, Shane, get into puts right here. He liked the open range breakdown. Good job. Uh, D-Touch, sorry, I keep forgetting who this is. <laughs> uh, but he got the 40% entry, and he highlighted it. Oh, nice. Wow, really nice confidence being able to take the first uh, couple minutes of the day. But clean entries, again, not worrying about that, not worrying about time, just focusing on the levels. Good stuff, D-Touch. Huge percentage, too. 30% is nothing uh, to be shy about. That's a crazy percentage. Patiently waiting for that gap fill. Good job, good job, Hayes. He probably did something similar. Saw rejection of the recent low. Waited for the candle to close and enter. Got out immediately at the first target. Short scalp W. And it's by Deuce. Remember, this is the guy up here that posted his loss after a quick breakdown of the 494.17 level. And here he is again, posting a win. Let's see it. Okay, so after uh, people's short under the new low... He got the open range breakout. A little late of an entry, I'll be honest with you. A little late. Almost like you're chasing a little bit. Man, this is a clean chart to look at. I like your background a lot. But good job. I think the biggest thing to take away from this trade right here is that Deuce is not scared. Deuce is not a worried trader. Deuce can take a hit and then still make another trade and it not ruin his day. Great job, dude. Seriously, round of applause to the strength you have. Uh, that's, that's very hard to have, to obtain. Takes time. Kind of a buy the dip. Kind of a BTD. I like how we broke that new high, went under that level, and then retook. Bought calls at 942 candles. Sold the first one at the new high of day for 13% and sold the last one. Oh, nice. You're doing multiple cons. Look at you. I right, see this. Okay, so he was buying that little hidden retest that was happening inside of the range above today's open earlier. Sold one at the new high. I love that. I love that you did that. And then just as we were approaching it, not caring, hey, let me let me sell perfectly at the level. No, selling towards it. Good good sells. Yeah, I, I'm actually impressed with your with the maturity of your sells. You didn't you didn't just buy here and then hopefully try to sell at the high of day. You actually knew okay i have a i have a recent high i can't ignore and i have a previous day high that i can't ignore and you sold at them good job very very nice what is next one spy futures entry or 80 percent entry sorry on vwap and took to higher probability reversal area which is the gap fill slash previous day anchor vwap which i expect buyers to try to defend why did I take the trade? If you followed in Discord or watching tech, we saw weakness and lows being made while Spy was trying to make a new high. That new high rejected with a nice impulse move under the VWAP. Then we had multiple points of confluence, which is the break of the support fib pocket and retest the VWAP uh, with bears. Profit target. I am finding I much rather trade the macro trend, so when I do take an intraday scalp against the macro trend, I will take profit at the highest probability reversal area, as known as where I am looking to take bullish trades on my pre-market. I like that. I like that because it's like our 80% entry or 90% entry, you know, looking for the best bullish invalidation to get your best bearish trades and looking for bearish invalidations to get your best bullish trades and, invite, and vice versa, of course. Um, but I like that. Taking profits into the area where you're expecting to be bullish if it was ever there, you know, positionally. 
Uh, so very, very good thinking. I like how you I like how you broke that down. I also love your trade review. You kind of just broke it down, and then you said why, and then you said profit target. I like that. Very clean. Straight to the point. Good job, Mel. Got the full lead test of the high of day to low of day. Entered after the hammer when we started to break a new low. Immediately flushed the previous day close. Sold one for 18%, and then sold... The next, when we flushed previous day close for 25%. Wanted more, but was thinking we might hold the previous day close. Another two contract play. Okay, I like the entry because you can see it's breaking away. Not just under the recent high, but also under its recent uh, support. So that it was trying to hold after making a new high. So I like that. Good entry. Nothing crazy there. And then you took profits into the previous day close. Okay, okay, okay. And it looks like you tried to get more out of your winner, and then it just ended up holding. Which good job. It looks like you did actually sell sell it for more than that one. Which I would, if I was looking back at this, I would say you probably sold this one for less. So it's even more impressive you sold it for more. Which means you did sell when it was a red candle. When this was pushing a new low, that's when you sold. Okay. Very clean creator. Good stuff. Squeezing out a little bit more. Oh, Sandal is trying to get me to swing steel. I see. Wait, is that real? For real? Wow. If Trump wins, he's going to block the acquisition. Hmm. I don't actually have an opinion on it. I was cool for it. If it doesn't happen, also cool. <laughs> I like CLF though, so I, that's why I didn't mind the acquisition. Oh, a lot of trade reviews. That was fun to look through though. I like to read through the chat trade because we really are different from every other community. Like I know every community is like, we're here to make you guys rich and make you money and we want you guys to be a good trader. Like in here, that is a serious thing. Like our plays called out. No, not as much. You know, it's if you're not paying attention, you're not going to hear the call outs. I'm throwing up fat air quotes right now. Because we don't traditionally go, all right, guys, I'm buying this con at this price, doing this at this and this. My style is my target. This is what I'm going to do. Like, I'm not, we're not doing that. Like, get into your own trades. I'm not here to fucking babysit you. You want to go over a system that works? Awesome. Let's do it. Let's get to work. Let's go through the storytelling. Let's get through some reps. Um, but it's funny. Like, people will come in here. Not, it, it pretty much never happens anymore. But people have come in here before and complained about, there's no call outs. And it's funny because, like, I've call out all the time. Leave in calls out. Daffy, D-Touch. Uh, the members like I can't even think of somebody who doesn't call out because it literally everyone in our chat does it that's what your community should be like everyone trading everyone on the same page everyone trading the same system um, asking questions of course of course we're all going to make mistakes bumpy road but overall you know it is kind of on you and and let's say the chat disappeared or I disappeared or everybody disappeared you know from the face of the earth you know, you would still have the knowledge you learn from here. Whereas people who are in these communities who just do call outs all the time and they're not really learning or, you know, maybe they're picking up something like, oh, he took a play from here to here. I get why he did that. Like, that's the most they're ever going to learn. But there's never a set system there. Right. So I don't know. I'd rather you guys be prepared than anything. Good idea, wise trader. Uh, very good point. He made. He said the indexes are mixed. And I agree. We are still in a no trade zone. Finally sold my SMCI. What? Hidden Land just sold a play that he bought for $130 at 4230 What?
Bro, where do I sign up to get to the J channel? Where are these hidden land plays at? Holy lord. Oh, I gotta I'm I'm doing this math off screen. Yeah, that's three thousand one hundred and fifty three point eighty four sixty one five three eight four six one five four percent. This is your percentage. So you do profits, which you pretty much made 4100 and then add two zeros, and then divide that by entry cost, 130. So 130, 3,153.84, which is pretty much 0.85, which is pretty much 3154%. Brother, what? I'm, I'm always finding myself, like, just mind-blown by your plays. But Jay's been doing that, too. That's the weird... That's the I keep saying weird. That's the craziest part. <laughs> It'll never happen again. Shut the fuck up. He's done it before. Maybe not that big of a percentage, but you've definitely had other plays that were like, you know, part of that percentage, I would say. It'll never happen again. This guy. This guy. Is this the same Jay that hit Roku? Well, I was talking about Jason when we were talking about Roku, but I, Jay probably was there. Jay was around during the Jason era, so he might have. <laughs> uh, I know Jay knows Jason <laughs> Jay you're fucking insane dude seriously oh, oh those are okay okay you did do a Roku recently my bad I thought he meant like I thought he meant I'm gonna look at it, Benny. Benny, 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 Benny. Oh my lord. I charted this? Uh, this must have been when y'all were like, can you chart <laughs> ETFs, please? Can you chart all the supercomputer stocks? This is nuts. Yeah, Benny, you're not joking. The weekly is a little crack. Hmm. You know, the scariest part about this chart is, is like, it's not even like, please, dear God, do not say the word valuation around me. Um, but the crazy thing about this is like shorts, you know, the reason this has gone up so much, it's not because, uh, I mean, it has been rallying, don't get me wrong, but a lot of the reason a lot of these have been going up, and this was my main argument for why spy has been going up from here is that people are too bearish. People are just too damn bearish. And what happens, guys, when you sell your bearish trades or lose your bearish trades and have to cut them? You're becoming liquidity for the bulls. You're becoming juice, energy. You're becoming fuel for the bulls. You know, and, and I'm, I'm not joking. If you go to SPY, it has the same moves. NVIDIA, AMD, SMCI, like almost all the charts that have had crazy rallies over the past couple months. I mean, especially some of these like NVIDIA and SMCI. Uh, but at every turn, at every new high, at every level, there's shorts. Shorts get into the market. And there was this huge article that came out saying like billions and billions and billions and the, the most the market's ever seen in shorts uh, quadrupling down on shorts again. And then we make new highs. Like, what do you think all that money becomes now? That's that's fuel for bulls now. So like everyone's like, oh, the valuations don't mean anything. Like they're so shit. Like yeah, right now they don't. Dear God, their valuations. Like, calm down. It's it. They're going up because people keep trying to short them so damn much. Like every time there's a new high, everyone's shorting them again. And guess what? They go up. Like a big reason most stocks have gone up recently is because people have gotten into too many shorts. I don't want to see anybody in here going, oh, valuations are so stupid. Like, they don't mean anything. Yeah, you're right. They don't. Right now. 
need some value need some valuation settling to be honest the markets have been rallying have been pulling back we have interest rate news there's no reason to really be sitting here going i'm an investor basing all of my opinions on valuations it just doesn't make any sense that would make sense in a stable market condition are we in stable market conditions no <laughs> A losing short is a buy. Exactly. Team, start selling your puts, please. <laughs> uh, React, what'd you say? Or did you just mess your message up? Well, yeah, they're not acquiring them now. I'm saying they were the original ones trying to acquire them. Nippon Steel, I've never heard of them. Thank God he's going to block that. Please do not give us back to China or Japan. Their steel sucks. When I started plumbing, the main thing I started taking out before COVID and all the hurricanes was Chinese steel. Man, that overseas steel is shit. It just doesn't last that long. And I don't care who wins the presidency. I want to see our exports go up. I don't understand how we make all these things and we don't export shit. Our exports are so down, it's crazy. Back to back inside bars, but a new candle. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was just checking on you. Thank you to whoever gifted me a premium subscri uh, subscription. We don't remember who it is, Muhammad, but I'm going to go ahead and go on a fly and say it was probably Rambo or Daffy. Uh, Rambo has gifted, like, probably close to, like, 70 memberships in the past couple weeks. And then uh, Daffy has gifted a lot, too. I can't deny that. Daffy's probably gifted 10-plus or more. I think Detouch has given some. I think Leadling gave one. So we're not sure who, but it was one of those guys probably. But appreciate you, Muhammad. And to anybody who doesn't know where to look, um, also speaking to you, Muhammad, any, anybody here who, who has the membership, go to the YouTube channel. Seriously, I challenge you. Go to membership. And you can start on some of the recent videos, um, but you can also just start at the very bottom if you want and then uh, kind of start from there. I can't load it because it's taking forever, but you get, what I'm, you get where I'm going with that. Start from the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah, David gave one, but I don't think it went to... I don't think it went to Muhammad, though. Unless it did, I'm just... Horrible memory. No, I went to JV McFadden, yeah. But that's, that's one of the people who probably gave it to you. <laughs> oh my god, Daffy, what the hell? <laughs> Look at off topic, no problem. Riyadu. Oh my god, this is old. Yo, this is this is from Instagram. Uh so Jay right here, BB stock team. He said, it took me a month to go from 5K to 90K. That's how you know COVID stimulus was throbbing. <laughs> and, like, this is, like, I'm not bashing Jay at all. But, like, this is why, like, we would laugh at social media traders. Because you'd have guys do less than this. Like, they'd use, like, 10K to get to that number. Or even more than that. And, and they'd be like, guys, I'm the best trader you've ever seen. Like, I did this in a month. Like, I, I have traders like this who don't give a shit about clout. Like... This is the chat we have. These are the people we have. We have actual traders in our chat. We don't sit here and bullshit. Uh, but seriously, insane job, Jay. Where'd those go? Where, where'd those gains go? To the car? <laughs> okay, I'm done. I like that part. <laughs> and we have tons of traders like that too that have like done their damage and just moved on. And good for them. You know, who cares? 
if they come back or ever engage in chat again. The goal of it is to, to succeed, right? So good for them. He said to taxes, a divorce, and long-term. Legend. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. I, I'll give Jay another shout-out. All, doing all of that, by the way, while having a child. While having to take care of another human being. So I don't want to hear any excuses like, oh, only kids have time to do this shit. There's a grown-ass man that that succeeded. And it's not like having a kid is a disadvantage or anything. I'm just saying it does take extra energy out of you. It takes extra time out of your day. Got that dog in him, exactly. Double inside bar on the spy 15 minute. What is up, Julian? You always make a great return to the chat every time you type, man. And great call out. You are correct so far. As of right now, this is a double 15 minute inside bar. Now, this candle still has half of its life, though, so let's give it a little bit more. Good call out, though. Positive print would give a very good sign for bullish reversal happening still, which is kind of what I think a lot of us are saying. After the failed close twice, and the continued hold, I'm very bullish above 492.50. Any loss of that, though, can definitely bring some nice, ugly pullbacks. And yes, I just said nice and ugly in the same sentence. Also, triple Qs breaking over 427.50s would be a great sign that SPY does want to continue holding. So also look for that double, double confirmation, I guess, if you want to call it that. Can you review my review? I got you, dog. And yeah, React and Julian calling out the same thing. Good call outs, guys. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep telling the story of the chart. Don't add any investment into any don't don't put your don't put any weight into any of your opinions, you know. It's all about I think it's it, this is good what's going to happen unless it does this. It's going to do this unless it does this. And that's it. For your targets, for your stop losses, for, for just mentally getting reps on the chart. Uh, where am I looking, Timmy? Oh, my bad. Reviews. All right, let's see here. So Timmy said, try to buy the dip. I like the higher high on SPY. And the hold of the golden pocket on both SPY and Triple Q, which was the major bearish pressure of SPY. Also, SPY rejected at 50% of the yesterday and the PM. You have such a clear understanding of what's in front of you, man. Great job. Uh, bears were clearly slowing down, and, and I entered when the golden pockets held. The cut was okay. I waited until the close, but when it closed under 49250, I was I said fine. Okay. Okay, you were going for the BTD and just didn't have it work out. So my thing is, is that... Honestly, just not giving it enough time. I understand why you cut it. But, wait, what? Is this the cues? Or the five minute, I mean? Or the one minute? Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You got spy and triple Q here. And then you're showing the candle. Okay, okay, okay. That took me a second to get. So you have the golden pocket of the low to the high. It held it. Ah, okay. The tech weakness did get you. Okay. Yo, good job, Timmy. Instead of just being like, it just randomly fell. I fucking hate trading and just losing your mind. You instantly were like, hold up, wait a minute. What were, what were the cues doing? And you found out like, okay, they fell more right at the same time as I was seeing. Why is there bearish pressure here? How many cut it? Um, I was going to say you need to give these plays more time on like the one minute and the f or on the five minute. I'm sorry. When you take by the dip setups, because a lot of the time they will do a lot of this messy trading before giving you the move. Um, but also at the same time, you know, on the other end of that spectrum, you have to remind yourself, like, I do need to cut these losers before they're too big. I, you need to be impatient with your losers because 
if it does just end up holding all range and then it do, it fails and still breaks lower later on, then you didn't just lose to theta or to the decay of your contract. You just lost to the price movement as well. Your IV is screwing you, you know. So now you're now you're down 80% compared to this trade where you probably didn't lose anything close to 80%. So I don't know. I think you did the mature thing and just decided to cut it and wait considering there isn't anything super concrete keeping you in this play or, or with this confidence at least. I, don't, I feel like you made the right decision. What do you, what do you guys think about Timmy? Y'all think he's dumb or y'all think he made a good decision? I mean, not dumb. Y'all think he's a good trader? <laughs> I'm trying to mess with them. Uh, but I, I think you made the mature decision, I'll be honest. Because lately, you know, I, I think we really need to kind of move in the direction of being impatient with our losers, being patient with our winners. You know, let your winners go more and, and be very impatient with your losers. Do Like, I think, again, cutting your losses quick makes it so much easier to win because now you're not battling uphill, you know? And I feel like that's a lot, some problem some of us get into is we, we create bigger losses than we could ever imagine. And then on the climb back up, it feels like you're climbing Mount Everest because it's just so impossible feeling, you know? It just feels like it's just so much. And I actually, I'm glad what Scott just said. Like, this is one of those days where, you know, there are some good scalp opportunities. I won't lie. Like, I'd say the main good scalp that happened on tech was the break of today's open after rejecting the, the supply. And then that gave one really good move. And then since then, some people are either looking for a continued rejection or a base build, right? The best trade that happened on SPY today uh, was the same exact story. We had the higher open. We went up into previous day high. We rejected. So you have one. Uh, the break under the higher low here after the higher open. The break under today's open. You know, and then on the five minute, it would have been impossible to catch a really good retest. Um, Peoples this morning showed us the trade of the day. You had an inside bar retesting 493.75, and then the next candle broke under the inside bar. The next candle broke under today's open and made a new low of day. So very, very solid bearish opportunity from there. Uh, I saw a few people do it from the actual high on the one minute. If you go back and look, there was actually a close under as well. You can see it here on that five minute candle. But there was minimal opportunity is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's not like we've had anything crazy yet. Like yesterday, it's pretty similar to yesterday in a way. We had a lower open and then we made a lower high and just kept falling. I bet a lot of you guys caught that no problem. It's the same thing that happened today, except they added in something. They added in a higher open and a rejection of previous day high. But besides that, it's the exact same trade as yesterday. See how you got this retest and drop? Only thing they did was just change where they retested from. They retested previous day high. They broke under uh, today's open, sorry. And where did they target? In this case, they're going to 49250s. And if they continue under that, they're going to whatever the next demand is. The same story here, 49250s. And if we can get under that, we can try to make more lows. So now that we're here, it's about developing, like, all right, what what do we have here? Are we bearish or bullish? But pretty interesting breakdown there. And good job, Timmy. I think you made the right decision. I mean, you know, based off how we trade in here. Trim the DAL swing, holding to see if it breaks a monthly resistance. Wow, over 40% on that trade, CJ. Nice. Uh, Daffy says that he is projecting another inside bar on SPY today. I could actually agree with that because there's no reason to move today out of range. Good breakdown. I like that. Everybody seems to be on the same page or posting similar analysis. Ah, a lot of talking. A lot of talking. 
just feel I feel so like wrong if I don't break down something or go over. But I also say I hate going over fillers. Like I don't want to just sit here and go over shit I don't care about. I'm gonna go over things that apply to the system or I'm not. Everything else is noise. Yo, Jay, I need to know about your next swing. <laughs> Itches arm profusely. Start scratching skin off. I need to know your next swing trade. <laughs> uh, NVIDIA looks like it wants to take it back to low of day. Watching 670, 650s could call out. Apple still holding Microsoft, still showing lots of weakness. I think on the BTDs, I need to wait longer. Yesterday, I got in kind of early as well, and I did the same thing. There you go, Timmy. Able to look back at your reviews. Because, yeah, buy the dips are slow, man. They really are. Um, buy, buy the dips are amazing, though. Like, like I don't really get in the mindset of wanting to trade it until I see a nice move to the downside. Like, I'm really not even thinking about it right here. Like, yeah, you should be looking for buying pressure holding here, but it's not really the same as a buy the dip in a sense. Right? A buy the dip would have been like yesterday, where it makes a massive lower open and a massive move to the downside. Right? Too much being sold here, you know, and you don't need RSI to know this has been sold a lot. We were just at 496. We got all the way to 490 in less than a 24-hour period. That is very quick. So it's about finding, like, good oversold moves. And this is the same thing for the case if we get overbought moves, you know, and then you get into a good resistance. It's about getting into a good area and then making a low and then making either the double bottom or the lower high or the higher low sorry of that and then getting over this impulse move you know this impulse move is everything so like on this one the first high was really about right here right and then if you want to add that low to you can just because you're like you know focused on this might be the higher low let me focus on this you could see it made a hammer and then slowly closed over in the next couple minutes so like this would have been a passive by the dip entry and then you're aiming towards 490 250 the support right here and then that day's open so you can see sometimes they work sometimes they don't but really the best ones happen when they have the best positioning and this is a really big case with swing trading too for anybody in here who's into swing trading and in my playlist all the time uh it's it really is about finding a good position of the chart and then finding good pressure at that position so like if you find like a hammer by itself like great that's awesome but if you could find a hammer at support or like this one right here. See how like price broke above this level right here? They made a hammer at the hidden term retest, at the hidden retest spot, the midterm retest, right? That's powerful. Going into demand, building hammers there, higher lows, that's powerful. Right here, it is powerful to see higher lows, but it's not as powerful because we're not really against anything here. You know, resistance is up here, supply is up here, demand's down here. We have a level here. You know, and there are some higher lows holding it, but it's not as well positioned as if it was up here or down here. See what I mean? So that's another thing, too, is positioning. It really is everything. VC said, give your honest opinion up or down from here. Most likely up, because right now you're holding 490 250s with multiple higher lows. But like I said, and what Daffy was also posting in the trade floor is that we wouldn't be surprised if today ended as an inside bar. So keep your range minimal. You know, you have 494, 17 here. You have previous day lows right here. So yes, more blood is possible. Yes, they can get down to previous day lows from here. If they can really just make some good pressure under here where they made this low and this level here. Um, but I would say up more than down just because there's nothing here. But it's really about having a plan set for both sides. It's not about being bullish or bearish. Right now, you should be bullish because higher lows are holding a really good level, right? You see another good rejection here? Yeah, short-term seller reactions can happen. We've seen why. Previous day, previous day high is stuck here. Today's high is stuck here. So there's selling pressure here to some extent. Oh, good, Jay. If you want to post it in a more private channel or you want to post it where not as many people are out, you feel pressured, let me know. DM me. If you don't want to share it all, be comfortable, man. I, I, I was just messing with you. I do want to see your next swing, but if you're not feeling for it, don't don't pressure yourself. I don't I don't want you feeling that way. And been holding above it. Just need to push above 9350s. Going to go further. Really above 94 would be better been watching oh roku i don't know i don't know why i skipped that comment 
I was looking at Roku as well. A couple weeks ago, I put them on my weekly watch list, and then I kind of just gave up on them. Um, but, but I have in the stream gone over them a couple times because of the pressure they keep building here. Uh, at first, they were looking really good with the lower highs, but then they got down here, built multiple hammers, and then since then built base over multiple hammers. And now you have a single soldier candle before earnings. So kind of like this candle. You can see that one didn't really go anywhere, but that was really just kind of rejecting the impulse move. So you're really just waiting for a move over, like like what you said, 93, 94s. It gets above that, it can get going. Plus, it's changed some trend a little bit, too. So you had a breakout, you had lower highs, you had lower lows, and then here they changed trend. You had a uh, the low hold, and then they didn't make a lower low. So they built a higher low, and now they've made a new high. So now, we're like you said, you're kind of just watching over this. So really just watching trend on that one. But beautiful change in trend so far. Kind of setting up for a potentially very powerful move, but we'll see. If you get into that play, I hope it gives you a meta move. <laughs> a mega meta move. This was one that I missed out, Jay. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's this candle. I'm staring right at it. Uh, this was the candle I was looking to enter, and then I was like, nah, I don't want to be the guy that buys into a high, but I should have just done it because it literally did a hammer and then a bullish kicker. It's like, what more could I have asked for? But I'm not get, beating up myself, but it's, it's nice to review and see uh, different signals play out differently. See which ones feel the, feel the best and, and work the best. I was shorting Netflix. I'm just kind of chilling now because it's just taking its sweet time. But I really do think this is going to take a dip to 552, 550, 545. Somewhere in here it's going to catch support and then work itself back up to reject or finally close higher again. I've been watching that one pretty heavily. Uh, Nike's pretty crazy. Chef and Daffy have been looking at that one. It is bouncing from a good spot finally. John Deere, I haven't really had time to focus on that one again shorted BA a couple times mm, shorted EMPH a couple times really just waiting on both of those because we got done with them last week lost on Ulta short term but I'm still watching this because I love this a lot as long as it holds a 497.40s I believe it is or 496.97 that's what it is 496.97 up to 500 if it can hold that range very good chance this ends up popping up to 514 520 range and if it closes over that well it can you know go a lot more but i like that chart a lot ulta still another really good one i like um afrm did a really good 90 percent entry on the daily that's about it i think that was most of my watches right there And we didn't really miss much. Spies are just still sitting here. Yeah, don't beat yourself up on that AB just swing. Could have easily tapped that previous high and instead of breaking that high, work back. Exactly. It could have done like a bearish kick right after. But yeah. Like I see that and then I see your SMCI trade. I'm like, man, if I had... If I had confidence like Jay, <laughs> I'd be in that play. But it's something you got to work on over time. What's your opinion on trading with the extended hours up or just the open hours? It's really personal preference page. Um, personally, I used to only be able to look at charts with extended hours on. Like I used to never be able to turn it off. Now I feel like I can't look at a chart with it on. You know, it's just something I grew into over time. Blame Leland, of course. But again, personal preference. You know, don't let anybody's opinion change how you want to look at your chart whatever feels comfortable to you and whatever you think is most effective with how you're looking at it you know if you feel like one of them is extra noisy to you then please turn it off or turn it on whichever one you know but that that is a really big personal preference question but you remember that too guys y'all's your opinion matters your preferences matter be comfortable moderna looking excited Oh, nice, Alexis. Getting a nice move off that little area we talked about. 
And remember, when we charted this, we just did some quick supply, some quick demands. We didn't really chart it that long. Got in light calls on Moderna. I broke my confirmation level. Nice, Alexis. Okay, good. Stick to your plan. Stick to your plan. Spy is breaking. Good call out. Oh, my bad. I was reading that late. I see you detouch. I see you. <sighs> All right, how many of you guys are in the Discord? Yo, Jay, look at Jay, look at Trade Floor. Username's posting Roku. Um, uh, but how many of you guys use the Discord? Uh, to get extra game plans or to use levels or to just kind of confirm your levels alongside them. Again, that's the weekly watch list, daily updates channel, game plans and levels channel. If you have premium, the Bueller and Leland TA channel. Uh, any of those four channels, how many of you guys use those? Delta Airlines is going to try to break the Monday resistance again. Trimmed one at over 40%, have two left. Good job, CJ. I didn't. Maybe you didn't hear me earlier. I was congratulating you because I, I was looking in chat and I saw you update it. You were up over, it was like 42% or more on your other one. Looks like you're still in a, or in uh, some runners. Good stuff though, CJ. Great job on your own trade breakdown. I like to compare my plane with yours and trade floor. Okay, good. That's really what I'm looking for. That's what I want to see you guys using. I don't want to ever see somebody in here going, I only ever do something when you post. Like, that's not what I want to hear. I want to hear that you're backtesting or, or, or going against the grain, you know, if you see my post and then you see your post and you're like, why is my level wrong? And then you ask me and then we go over it. That's what I want to see because then we can see, all right, where are we messing up at? And it's a good thing for you because you're putting yourself into the routine of doing it yourself, not relying on someone else. So more power to you. And that's really what you should be using everything here. The stream, the discord, call outs by people. They shouldn't be something you rely on or dedicate yourself to. It should be a tool should use these as outside confirmations, extra extra things to get you in or out of a trade. Let's say you have high regard for Timmy as a trader. You just you look up to Timmy, you always see him call out, you love the way he trades, and then you start taking trades. And let's say maybe you get into a put and then you see Timmy's into a put. And that that's going to give you more confidence because now you're like, "Okay, me and Timmy are seeing the same thing. This is awesome." And then let's say a different day happens. Let's say Timmy's in calls and you're in shorts or looking to get in shorts and you're just really confused on why he's in calls. Let's say it continues to go up. Well, then you could start to review or you can even ask, hey, Timmy, why'd you like this? Or, or why was it like this or that? You know, and break it down, seriously. That's, that's how you should be using everything here. The stream, me, the Discord, as a tool. We are tools. We are not something you should be dedicating yourself to. Use the Discord to study charts, all of it. I watch all of the channels. I take trades sometimes if I feel comfortable with already knowing the ticker. Okay, that's a good idea too. Like, like, kind of like what I was saying, a little different, but I like that. Get them gains, y'all. I'm out for the day. Good luck. See you later, King Clips. And I won't get too deep into the you know using it as a tool conversation, but I just wanted to say that and go over that for a minute, just because. We're not like other communities. <laughs> you and Chef are my Timmy. <laughs> yeah, I like Chef. How are you doing, by the way, Smokes? I haven't seen you in forever, man. How are you doing? 
you're always uh, always feel free to post your trades or just post how you've been doing in the Discord as well whenever you're around. Always happy to have you around. Another OG. Well, where you been, man? What you been up to? It's already 10.30? Since when? Cues for the first time... We can remove these elbows. Cues for the first time are potentially closing over 427.50. Oh, Jay, I'm not missing it, dude. I'm not missing it. You will not see me miss it. You're not going to see me miss it. I've been watching this on the one minute to the monthly time frame. Like every other hour of the day. Absolutely, you're going to get more active. Also, yeah, take your time. You know, like I just was saying about everything else, be comfortable. If you don't want to you don't feel like typing, don't type. Fuck it. Get into the system, though. The levels, the entry types. Uh, get some mental reps. Every day you should be getting some mental reps. Going through the routine of drawing the levels or, or reading through them. You know, telling the story of the chart or doing some chart maintenance, maybe. Um, but even if you're not typing, you know, get into the routine of things. Kick your ass in gear. We're here for you. Just waiting on this 11k settlement check, but about to go crazy with the option. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Make sure you get into the habit of things first before you dump any money into it, but I'm happy to hear that you'll be back. There's no option in missing the BA play that has to be a group effort. No, it is. Like, I'm not I'm not leaving it. Jay, you're in lifetime chat? Like, post in there. Post your swings in there. Like, that's where me, Sherman, Noxta, Jack, that's where all the swing traders are. Uh, Alexis, all of them are in there. That's where we try to hold each other accountable. <laughs> try. Under, underline try. Thank you, Jay. But yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do that. That sounds fun. Let's try to have a team effort behind some uh, swings in there. Which, that's kind of what we're already doing, but let's let's do it more. I think adding you there would be a great, uh, great thing. Plus, I don't know about everybody else in chat, but I look up to people like you, Jay, because it's just people who have been here for a long time. People have been, I'm not even talking about like profitable. Like, I'm not even saying like, oh, these consistent badass traders who make tons of money. Like, no, I just mean it in terms of like, they're a leader, they're outspoken, but they're humble. Like, they're not somebody who's going to sit there and just bully you, um, give constructive criticism. You know, they're not there to roast you, but they're going to give you something to help you out. Uh positive reinforcement i feel like our, our chat's really good at positive reinforcement like when you do something that makes sense it's like oh good job yes correct that's how it's done it's not just like yeah good job man whatever i did better than you like it's not a competition it really is about helping each other out to get on the same page and then to hold each other accountable to be disciplined <clears throat> my gut is telling me above open we will smack high of day in 495 but another ib would go brazy for tomorrow 100 percent, timmy and that's kind of the higher probability situation right now what you just broke down let me hold the dollar <laughs> futures until then okay nice you've been doing futures cool cool nothing wrong with that when i get back to work i'll join lifetime i love swing trading my posts in the chart section are usually swings. I actually read through those, CJ. If, if you don't, don't feel pressured to buy Lifetime just because there's swing trading in there. Um, I read through all of y'all's as well. I've actually been reading through yours a lot in the premium section because I see you, you've been pretty active in there. Every so often I see you break down like a, a new swing trade or you're just looking at something or reviewing or, or talking to yourself, you know, <laughs> which is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Uh, talking to yourself can be a really, really good thing. Is it breaking down something, uh, going over a topic? Just kind of reading out loud to yourself and breaking it down to a further extent will give you better understanding of what you're looking at. No, nah, man, that's why we love you, bro. How many bosses show love to their employees <laughs> or look up to them as well? Not to say I work for you, but I know you're more knowledgeable than me. No, nah, it's not even like that. Yeah, I don't even see it like that. I hate seeing people like that. It's just weird, like... You're my member, you're my bitch, pay me. 
uh, do this, do that. Like, I, it's not like that in here. Like, in here, it really is like somebody signs up, they're going to learn a lot. And the next thing you know, that person that just learned a lot is teaching me something that I didn't know. You know, and it's like I have so much to gain from from members in terms of learning because now I have hundreds of people going into my own system and optimizing it like like Leland. Leland's a great example of someone because he's probably the only person who's ever used my strategy and then made it better. Uh, and it's it, it's crazy because like imagine if I was some ignorant piece of shit. And I didn't ever listen to anybody. I wouldn't know what some of these better breakdowns are. I wouldn't know what some of these better lower high retests are with a calculated number. I couldn't exactly tell you. Nowadays, I can tell you exactly where it's going to bearish retest or bullish retest from. It's just about, you know, will it hold or will it continue? Do you have to stop out? Yeah, it's all on you at that point. But, like, imagine if, if you were a closed-off mind and you didn't allow open opinions or constructive criticism. Like, that would just be so stupid. <laughs> it's not because... Like, you want to always be right or anything. Like, no, it's nice to have somebody give you constructive criticism so you know how to be better. Fuck being right. I'm trying to be better. Love you, Jay. LOL, thanks. My dog doesn't listen. <laughs> Mine doesn't either. No clear direction as of yet. VC, you are correct. VC, you are correct. Everybody, if you're in this zone of feeling like you should be in a trade but you aren't, you're doing the right thing. There's nothing special about this move. Is it holding above 492.50? Yes. Are there higher lows? Yes. So are we short-term bullish? Most likely. But we're still under today's open, and we're stuck in this little range. Which there's nothing wrong with that. We understand that ranges happen, consolidation happens, so future opportunity can be had. It isn't just going to move every single fucking second. So we'll give it its break today. They just needed a breather. I'm looking at getting into swing trading when I have to go back to work. Uh, when swinging a month out, do you keep your loss percentage the same as day trading? It, no, I don't think about it. Your whole question is, and I'm not getting on to you, Chuck, but your whole question is entirely wrong. Um, one, we don't really do swings that far out. Two, if we do, we're not basing our percentage uh, like you would as day trading at all. Like it, you shouldn't even be doing that in day trading, to be honest. Like, like if I, if I'm in calls here and it breaks this support, that's my stop loss. Like I'm out. I'm not going to sit there and be like at 16%, I'm out. Like if you want to follow a system that gives you that great, but we're going to stick to the levels. And that's kind of what the swing trading represents as well. You'll notice there's a, there's a system to things, whether you're using the EMA, the EMA system or the level system that we use for swing trading, you'll see there is always a stop out point. Uh, with a level or a particular part of a pattern that you might be trading off of. So like in swing trading, and I'll give you a good breakdown. So like in swing trading, let's say you have a downtrend. What is going on here? So pretend this is going down. <laughs> you get the lower open, you get the close over the previous day's midpoint in, half, or in golden pocket, right? That's a piercing line, right? And let's say I have some consolidation that sits to the right, and then I see a hammer sit here, and I'm like, oh my god, finally. Like, it's not just giving me this, it's giving me other information. Now I'm super bullish. I'm, I'm so ready to get into this, right? I'm, I'm ready for it to go up. <clears throat> but let's say it doesn't go up. Let's say it fails. Let's say it fails. I'm in calls and it fails. What is my stop out point? The halfway and golden pocket of that original reason why I was liking the chart. If it breaks that, that invalidates my idea. If that invalidates me being bullish. So that invalidates me being in the play. That would be my stop loss. Uh, and that's how you go over it in swing trading. When you use the EMA system, it would be the next EMA just because it's super easy. Um, but as you get into swing trading or you go over my swing trading content, at least if, if you do end up using my style of swing trading, there is a ton of video breakdowns from years ago, uh, from recent. So it's, I, I still swing trade now based off the same system. So take your time is what I'm saying. Take your time. There's a, it's a, it's a whole new, it's a whole new monster, but it can be, it can be taken down the same way, you know, the same way we take our day trade the levels and how you use the levels to give yourself a system of like, all right, here's my target. Here's my stop loss. Here's this, here's that. Like just looking at areas of control, basically. <clears throat> I like that F being right. Try to be better. Exactly. Who cares about looking cool? I mean, short term, you might care about how you look to others, but in the end, when you're losing money, you start to not give a shit. So it's like, should I really care? <laughs> uh, considering usually decays less with more time, contracts are usually more expensive with 
further dated contracts. I don't think about percentage as much as my plan going into it, 100%. And Jay made a great point. This is a great point that Leland makes in his strike selection video is that, yes, you might be buying more time with those contracts, but you're also paying a lot more. So your percentages are a little bit more, you know, effective. So let's say I'm in a $100 play, right? And I'm down 15%. Well, that means I'm only down 15 bucks. But let's say I'm in a $1,000 play. Well, that 15 bucks is now $150. That's a lot larger of a loss equity-wise. So that's why percentages aren't really the greatest thing to go off of in terms of like stop losses and stuff. Now, if you have like a set system and you're doing the same thing every time, I get that. I, I could totally understand that. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm gonna go minus 60% of my play, but yeah, I just follow the set levels I have for that specific trade. I usually only swing contracts, maybe ma max two weeks out. Okay, good, good looks. Jay giving us some good insight too from his point of view. Okay, great, thanks, yes. Uh, starting to watch your swing video. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, take your time on those. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, Lifetime has a pretty cool breakdown because me and Sherman and Jack and Noxto, like everybody kind of uses the system the exact same. We just all have a different comfortability with a certain part of it. Like, like me and Sherman, we love the EMA system and the levels. It's not really like we're using one or the other. Sometimes we use both. Sometimes we use just one. You know, it's, it's really just what we're feeling for the chart. And then you have like Noxta, Jack, a couple of those guys who were just using levels and zones and, and, and that's it. Like just straight up using price action. That is it. You know, that's great. Like it's really about finding your, your part of the strat that makes sense to you and then being comfortable with it. There's so many different styles you can use off of that though. You know, but, but all of them revolve around patterns with positioning just like we do on the smaller time frames so in the in this in a sense it's the exact same but in a sense it's not and anybody who wants to get started with swing trading uh get into it the right way i would take your time going through the free stuff uh go to playlist scroll down swing trading videos there's 14 in there there's a hell of a lot more on my channel i just have not taken the time to add them to this playlist but this is a very very good start to things um and then also if you type moustache like we're from england i can't type moustache bot sorry uh and then you click this one moustache options bot moustache trading team this is me this is a bot that i own um i don't post on it anymore i just use it to like spam our own server um, but this is this is originally where I used to post everything. Some of these videos are two, three years old. Look, fuel cell and beyond. What's up, Jay? <gasps> oh, I remember this trade. This is still one of my favorite trades of all time. So this was uh, like beyond. This is when beyond was actually like tradable, but they broke down to just above a hundred. And they sat here and they built base. They built an inside bar, a double inside bar, broke out, and then they had a reset candle. We bought calls on that reset candle. It looks like I'm short-term bearish on this now, in this video. And then fuel cell. God, I haven't heard of this name in forever. They used to, I don't know if they're still around, but they used to do work with uh, Tesla. It looks like I'm bearish on this as well. It's like up against the level, bearish resistance, bearish hammer. Hmm. That's kind of funny. Uh, but this is another channel with a ton of videos on it. Looks like it has just over 40 videos on it. And it's all just swing trading. That's all it is. Well, VC, let's be honest, VC. There was movement a couple days ago. There was movement yesterday. Today is the really the first range day on the intraday. So it's, I would say intraday wise, this is probably the first boring day. But the last two days have been crazy good. And if you're talking about the daily time frame, then yes, I also agree. The daily time frame has been like that. It really depends on what time frame you're talking about. Swing trading wise, daily time frame, yeah, we're, we're definitely range trading. Smaller time frame wise, this is the first day we've actually started range trading. Yeah, daily. Okay, okay. I'll just make it sure. Because, you know, some people aren't looking at that and they might take your message the wrong way. I know what you meant. We did get a little bit of up movement and just like that, already back down to the uh, main supports where they've been kind of holding the last hour or so. <laughs> really, the next big move is going to happen from this support or off of this support. 
There's just so much consolidation here. They fell here, broke back above it. This is where they decided to hold multiple times. And this is kind of where all, a lot of our lows are holding today. Sandal, are you here? I need my guinea pig sand dollar or Mike T. Is Mike T here? Mike T or sand dollar? I need my eagles. Where are they at? Uh, stretching is so good. Massive move to the downside on SPY here. Triple Qs are experiencing the same thing. And this was what was kind of stopping me from like really taking another trade. I just didn't like how the market's not on the same page. And then you go to the 10 year and the dollar, and they're doing the same thing. It's like, what the hell's going on today? Yo, Mike T, uh, do you have a, do you have any uh, geothermal energy tickers that you look at or know of any that I could research or look at? Yo, Scott. Oh, my bad, CJ. CJ said the swing videos are great. He shows trades that go for and against. They are really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is a, that is true. I don't just show winners. I show plenty of losers. I definitely lost some trades, but there was also a reason for each one, so that's why it was a really good video. Good job. I was just about to say, Scott, I was happy for you because I remember earlier you said you were sitting cash. Uh, you were sitting cash because you had not taken, it, taken a trade yet. Good stuff, man. I'm happy to hear you had confidence to get into something. What, what, what gave you this entry? You liked it under today's open, or what was your big reasoning? Which, again, guys, for a quick rubric, I have tried to be better about leaving this on my screen. Um, but just a quick breakdown, just for anybody who isn't with our system and it doesn't understand order of operations. You know, there is an order to our levels. We don't just trade level to level. There is an order to them. I knew that spy bounce was fake, lol. <laughs> That's what Benny said. Yeah, I mean, it was just a little sketch. Like, I was definitely more bullish than bearish because of us holding here, if you're just looking at this chart on its own. But then you start to look around, and you're like, man, nothing looks that great. You know, and I'm happy to see Qs down here again and trying to hold, but at the same time, like, it, it brought more short-term downside at the worst time for spy, you know, right as they're finally building some room away from support. So imagine if the Qs did that while spy was sitting here. Spy might be down headed towards 490 right now, for all we know.
I entered because we broke 492.90. I'm still a beginner, lol. No, you're good. I was just trying to figure out why you entered. I, I just like to see a reason. Uh, Nomly said, "What? Uh, that happens to be a golden pocket fib level spy just fell from. Am I wrong? Uh, it depends what fib you're grabbing. So let me see what fib he's grabbing or you're grabbing to get that. Because honestly, right here, the only fib I would have drawn was probably this one." Yeah, prob probably down to here, because they made their they made their lows and then built base from there. So like you definitely have your low established. So you can at least have that. And then they failed under four ninety three twenty. He said four ninety two ninety though. It's like way down here. Or maybe he was buying towards the end of that candle, and then as it dumped, he took his profits quick. Maybe that, maybe that's what he did. Maybe you're right, Benny. Scott, is that what you did? Did you draw any fibs or anything? Or what, did you just straight up just enter? If you don't have any reasons, that's why I'm wondering. Because, like, around here, we like to have reasoning for why we enter and exit. And it's okay to be a beginner. I understand. There's going to be some confusion there. Some catch-up. I like to give the reason. It makes me a better trader because I can find out if it was a wrong trade to take. No, yeah, you're, you're tr totally right. I agree. And it helps you, like, learn about yourself, too. Because if you, like, let's say you have, like, a review log or something and you go through it and you're like, wow, nine times out of ten that I win, I'm doing this. Or nine times out of ten that I lose, I'm doing this. It's like, maybe I change that. You know, just adjust one one thing within yourself. I'm, I, I don't know why you entered, I'm going to be honest. Um, but I am happy to see that you took profits instead of just randomly holding. So I can at least say that because... There's a clear support of today's low here with 492.50. So clearly you were able to get out with profits at a good part of the chart. That much I can be happy for. If you drew the retest fib, awesome. But yeah. Test it back down to front. Are you serious? Oh, AMD falling off a cliff. Uh-oh. Rut row raggy. You still have a lot to learn. Totally fine, Scott. Totally fine. We all do, to be honest. I mean, not just about the market or the system we're trading, but about ourselves, too. Oh. I know I, I don't like to do this too much, but you could do the one minute fib here too. Look for a retest of pretty much where Scott entered. Could look for more retest trades there. A little risky though as you're into the supports. It's probably better to just wait for an actual break of more structure and look for that retest rather than looking for, you know, this little bit of structure. It's not really anything special. But guys, with that, I think I am going to end the stream.
I appreciate you guys being here with me for so long. It is almost 11 o'clock already. We're getting into the lunch hours of the day, so real last put it last minute quick game plan um you're basically looking at the lows of yesterday on triple q's to see if they break or hold on spy you're getting kind of the same thing but we're not at previous day lows we're at today's low so the exact same story but at today's low but i'll see you guys later on thank you guys again um i'll make sure to post my update a little bit into power hour on spy and triple q i'll probably do that now actually uh for the anybody who's looking in there but every day I'm going to be posting an initial game plan, an update around lunchtime or after lunchtime. And then after the day is over, after the market closes, I'll post new levels and new stuff for the next day for Spy and Triple Q and SPX and all that good stuff. So I'll see you guys later on. Thank you guys again for all the breakdowns. Thank you guys again for being here, listening in on some of the rants, uh, going through some of the trade reviews with me, going through some of the live trades, some of the live trades some of the members took. Um, we only took. I only called out one live trade in here today. We called out one small breakdown on the one minute under this support, and we got like 14 to 20 percent uh, within like four minutes. But besides that, that was very minimal. We didn't catch the bigger trade with everybody earlier on. Uh, we had gone over those. So if you want to go back in the stream and catch some of those trade reviews, we went over a ton from the members who all caught honestly better trade than me today. So very proud of you guys. Very proud to see a lot of you guys just kind of sitting here. And I can see some of you guys are starting to catch on to the fact of, oh we trended uh, the day before we trended this day you know today maybe we get an inside bar i'm starting to see more of you guys call that out which is good even when you're wrong don't be mad about that don't be sad about that it's okay to be wrong about calling that out that's an okay th thing to be wrong about um but but i'm glad to see some of you guys starting to get into the rotation of seeing like okay we went up we went down it's time to slow down we went up we went down it's time to slow down like just just knowing that basic vague breakdown is so helpful because it, it stops you from over trading but guys, I will see you on. I will see you later on. Thank you guys again for being here and uh, and posting your trades, posting your breakdowns, uh, posting your updates. It helps me. It helps other people in chat, whether you know it or not. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys again. I appreciate you, and I'll see you later on. Love you all.